exact time of the year where I've watched all of the old K-dramas. I'm up to date with all the good new ones. So basically the only thing left I have to do is talk about them and seeing as no one wants to hear me talk about them, I thought why not film a video. For this video, I didn't really want to include any of the really popular and good K-dramas such as Goblin, My Love from Another Star, uh, Weightlifting, Fairy King, Book Jew. Even though they're so good, I feel that if you're into K-dramas, you most definitely have watched these. I wanted to include in this list more original and K-dramas are not as popular but as good as the ones I just mentioned before. Yes, um, this is spoiler free zone by the way, I'm not going to be spoiling anything, I'm just going to convince you to waste your summer and watch these. I was about to say that I was going to link the K-dramas down below, but it's legal and I can't link them down below then, so <laughs> let's not do that. In 10th place, we've got Lucky Romans. I wasn't really sure whether to include this one because it doesn't have a mind-blowing plot, but I just thought, did it make me scream? Y'all, yes. so I said, screw it, let's include it. This is probably the funniest K-drama I've watched and the one that's made me laugh out loud the most. I swear this has probably made me laugh more than like 99% of the people I socialize with. Woo! It's kind of weird but not weird in a bad way, weird in a funny way, weird in the type of way where I'm gonna watch you. It's about this woman who's actually played by Hwang jun -um. Basically her sister is in a coma and she's so desperate for her to wake up that she ends up going to a fortune teller. I don't know, K-drama logic right there. Either way, she goes to a fortune teller, the fortune teller tells her that in order for his sister to wake up, she has to meet a man that is born on the year of the tiger. And she does meet a man who's born in the year of the tiger, problem, he's the CEO from the company she works in and basically shit goes down. The only thing I must say is that when the couple gets together, it does get a little bit cheesy and cringe-worthy, so either you can watch it and cringe, you can skip their scenes, which is what I did, or, or you can just watch it up till that point. <laughs> Ninth place is Cinderella and the Four Knights. Must say that I am into the whole really cute, simple, lighthearted, life is good kind of K-drama. You give me a reverse harem, you've got me. <laughs> this one made me really happy to watch though and I was always looking forward for the next episode to air. But the main girl basically ends up living with four guys and I love whenever friends live together even though they weren't really friends. Um, I just love the entire house sharing, K-drama type of thing going on. This one's really nice to watch if you want something lighthearted before going to bed to make you forget about the struggles of your life. This one's it. Number eight, we've got Bread of the Century. One of the reasons that really got me into this was because I loved the main girl so much. She was just so nice and just so good in like such a true way. She was just really true to herself throughout the whole K-drama and they didn't make her extra cute for her to be nice if you know what I'm trying to mean. She was just really down to earth and I really loved the development in between the main couple because at first they kind of hated each other and then they actually, you end up loving them together and individually as characters. But I swear to god, this main actress, she acts so freaking well. She actually acts as uh, two people. She acts as herself and as this other girl who she's pretending to be. And god, you act so freaking well. Let me just tell you something. Episode 4, minute 17, best comeback I've heard in my entire life. I'ma write that all over my body, write that in my grave when I die. <laughs> okay, you guys know the halfway K-drama downfall thing, which you probably don't because I just made that name <laughs> up. But what I mean with the whole halfway K-drama downfall is basically when a K-drama starts out really well but then sort of ends up a little bit bad. Now, this has happened in so many K-dramas. You know, the first 10 episodes are so good. They're mind-blowing. They just make you want to like bang your head to the table till you forget your name. You know what I mean? Then the next six episodes turn like freaking angsty and like the main couple can't be with each other, the girl goes to another town which probably smells like fish, the Ajuma is paying her off for her not to marry the main guy, she ends up pregnant, you blink your eyes, next thing you know she has a freaking two year old son. Two episodes pass, they reunite, the guy goes to get her to the town that smells like fish, the Aust place, everything's well. And the last episode, they just get married, they have the two-year-old son watching them get married, they invite their enemies, I don't even know K-drama logic again. But yes, this has happened in so many K-dramas and this happens in this one, but it's still worth it, I swear. Those first 10 episodes are so good, the next ones are just what I kind of explained right now, they kind of go down, but it's still good, so watch it.
Number seven is Hotel King. Now, must say that Hotel King does have a really dark plot, especially the first episode. It's pretty dark. I don't know how many times I've started watching Hotel King and then left it because that first episode has a really dark theme. The love story is so nice. The plot is a little bit heartbreaking, but it's still really good. And they act really well in this K-drama. Plus, the girl is so pretty. She's gorgeous. What even? Now, Lee Dong-wook acts in this K-drama as the main guy and everyone was fangirling about him when he appeared in Goblin. I was just like, been there, done that. He looks even better in Hotel King. He acted in Hotel King before acting in Goblin and he looks so much hotter in this one. Like, he looks so manly and attractive. Spoiler alert, he has a tattoo in his back. Do you need any more reasons to have that Lee Dong-wook in a suit with a tattoo in his back? Go bless your eyes, please. Leaving his tattoo aside, it's a really long K-drama. It has around 30 episodes, so if you want to waste your summer but also enjoy it, go watch it. Another Oh Hey Young is number 6, and I love this one because of how original and different it is to other K-dramas. Characters are really relatable just because they're really psychologically complex and they really do develop throughout the entire story. It is really heartbreaking though, but it's really good and the romance is actually one of my favorites because it just felt really true. Those kiss scenes had me freaking shook, screaming at 3 a.m. Number five, we have Healer. Now, Healer is a classic K-drama that you have to watch. At first, I avoided it thinking it was going to be a medical K-drama, but then I realized it wasn't. It has some romance filled with action, so it gets you really excited. The backstory, though, is really heartbreaking. It really got to me. Ji Chang Wook acts there and have to say that the chemistry be between the two main leads is so freaking good. It's one of the classic ones, so yet again, if you haven't watched it, you have to watch it. Plus, you get an Ajuma who's a hacker. Do you need any more reasons to watch it? Even though it has a heartbreaking backstory, there's also really funny moments, so go watch Healer if you haven't. The fourth one is Sassy Go Go. Now, I have a soft spot for high school K dramas, and Sassy Go Go is my ultimate. A fave when it comes to high school K-dramas. I loved both of the leads, but Kim Yeol's smile did things to my heart. I swear to God, I actually watched this other K-drama, which wasn't even good. It was actually really bad just to see him smile. He's so cute. It takes place in a boarding school, which is really cool, and it kind of shows you the slice of life of these two groups. The first group is formed by people who get really good grades and are on top of the list, and the second group is formed by people who get really bad grades. Basically, what happens is that they somehow have to end up doing this choreography together to kind of see the progress of how they become friends. What I also loved about this one is the lack of Ajumas getting into their children's life because to be honest, whenever I watch a high school drama, they spend like 20 minutes focusing on the freaking old Ajumas when I am not watching this because of you, you know? I never finished the last episode of Sassy Go Go and I've rewatched this one twice. The reason is because it's just so good that I didn't want it to end you know when something's just so good you don't want it to end so you never do finish it and you never watch the last episode? Maybe it's just me, I don't know. I should finish it though and you guys should watch it if you want some high school good vibes type of K-drama. Third place, we've got Lookout. Now, Lookout is my all-time favorite K-drama when it comes to plot and it's actually one that aired recently. These plot twists of this K-drama kept me questioning my own existence. I loved it. It sort of has some healer vibes to it too because the main guy is a hacker. This other secondary girl also works with computers. The main girl is such a badass and I just love their friendship moments in between them. It pissed me off that this one didn't become really popular and the reason why it didn't is because there's no romance. Now, people who don't watch K-dramas that have no romance, like, what even? In your life, you're not gonna find any romance. Like, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna move on? What? What are you gonna do? If you want re a really good plot, watch a look at it. If you want really good friendship moments, watch it. The main girls are such badasses. The acting-wise, it's so good. And the plot twists are amazing. And if you're a shower and you haven't watched this one, what are you doing? Because your man key acts in this one. So, watch it. On second place, we've got romantic doctor teacher Kim. I just love this K-drama so much. It's honestly one of the most original ones I've ever watched. This one takes place in a hospital that is isolated from the city and the people who work in the hospital are really weird, but really weird in a good way. Everyone who works in that hospital ends up becoming friends and the teamwork is super cute to watch. The romantic doctor teacher's game first episode 
is my favorite first episode I've ever watched. Those kiss scenes. Before anyone points it out, yes, the main actor does look like Sahun, but that's not the reason I watched it. Maybe that's a reason why I felt a slightly bit more attracted to that actor than the rest of the actors, but that's not the main reason why I watched it. So if you haven't watched it, then stop watching this video and get your illegal ass to watch Romantic Doctor Teacher Kim right now. So uh, as my laptop decided to be rude and delay the last footage of my video, I am here again. Hi. Yeah, as I was saying a day ago, I... What was I saying a day ago? Yes, about my first favorite. Let me just say it. It's about my first favorite. Oh, every time I see you, so yes, the sentence of the sun. The Sentence of the Sun is one of my all-time favorite K-dramas and I feel like it has everything that a good K-drama should have. Something that I liked was how the leads fell for each other in the first episode and the romance sort of started from the first episode. In other K-dramas, it takes so much time and honestly, I just end up getting tired of them. Plus, the secondary couple is just as good as that main couple. Loki, I'm kind of more trash for that secondary couple. Honestly, it's just a roller coaster of emotions. One minute you're laughing, the next minute you're sobbing, the next minute you finish the episode and you look at yourself in the reflection of your screen and you don't know what happened, but you keep at it because it's good. It's like a win-win situation because you're feeling all these emotions while your ass is in your bed and you're not doing anything. I'm not going to summarize the plot because I don't really feel that I can summarize a plot without giving any spoilers, so just go and watch it. I remember I got so obsessed with this K-drama that once it finished, I sort of didn't know what to do with my life, so I ended up buying a Sung Joon Ki phone case. I legit had the phone case in my hand for a second ago, and it's not here anymore, so I can't show it, but... I bet that most people have already watched this K-drama because it's super popular, so if you haven't watched it, go and watch it because it's that good. Plus, the main couple is getting married in October, which... Uh, has nothing to do with the K-drama, but it's still cute. So yes, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and that you found some new K-dramas to watch. I'm gonna go now because I haven't had breakfast and I'm hungry and my stomach's about to start making weird noises and that would be embarrassing. So bye! Baby.